Once you introduce a format of recording, you change the nature of the experience. So to say that it's a recent thing that live music has turned into beats and loops is, um, it, you know, the, it, it, it coincides with the history of recorded music at large. How do you feel, I mean, you know, when someone calls you the ambassador, personifies as the ambassador of a certain genre of music, which is worldwide, and that too in New York, the capital world, how does that make you feel? The only uh, advantage of that is to tell my, show my parents that I have a meaningful job. It's actually, it's, it was a quote from the New York Times, and as an artist you use whatever we can to get more people to notice what you're doing. Am I the only ambassador of a genre of music? Absolutely not. So how, how did you take that negativity, if you got any from your parents, how did you tackle it since you are successful in your game now? Um, well, I think that you know most parents, and particularly immigrant parents, like do not uh, want stability and certainty, and I think uh, a career in the arts is not certain. It's, it's, uh, it's, there's an irony, you know, entertainment is a zillion dollar business, but being the performer is always risky, and it's very hard to flesh out what a career would look like, and I think any parent's intention is just to, for you to have a stable, steady income, but, you know, we can't all do that, can we? So, I think you fake it till you make it, and, uh, you know, I, I did this slowly and surely until it was the thing that I had to make, uh, you know, my primary, my primary gig. She's an educator, she's a teacher, at, at a professor, I would say, at um, NYU Chess School of the Arts. Recorded uh, music, I believe, right? Yeah, it's Clive Davis uh, recorded music. It's part of NYU Tisch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I, I, I teach some classes at, at uh, it's undergrad and various things. I got started in the program teaching a class on Bhangra and Bollywood. I've grown to teach other courses. This summer I'm teaching, uh, for the second time, the business of electronic dance music. Basement Bhangra. That is, it itself is just a whole world to, to me, being Punjabi in New York City, loving that music. It's been, what, 16 plus years now? Mm -hmm. And still growing very hard, no matter where it is. What La Poisson Rouge, now on Bleecker. So, how did that start, and what do you expect from it every month? What do you want to give out to the people? Well, it started as, um, you know, an opportunity at a venue that said, hey, come up with a concept for a night. And at the time I started it, I was, you know, getting started in the South Asian, uh, in, in the scene, whatever scene there was. And I was constantly being told by Desi promoters to not play hip hop music and to not play too much cab music because they would say it's cab driver music. And my idea behind, behind Bass on Bhangra was to play the music I wanted and to not be dictated into class uh, you know, or racial assumptions. We're a racist amongst ourselves. Punjabis are unfortunately treated as buffoons all the time. And uh, I don't believe in that. The music's great. And, I, and that's really how it started. Is, and I found an audience for it. And this is a time when before hip hop was on mainstream radio. It was only on certain stations. So um, you know, that was the impetus for the party, was to highlight my love of this genre of music. Um, the rest is history, and it was just, you know, fortunate things happened to, you know, Bali Sigu happened to be promoting his new record deal, and he happened to be the first artist we had, so we packed the house the first night, and, you know, we've had the great pleasure of bringing many established and emerging artists, and that's one of the great joys of the party. But you gelled together hip-hop, which is your love, then you have Bangra, the two genres of music that you really love, and you put mm -hmm. them together, you compiled an album, based in Bangra. Mm -hmm. After that, when can we hear more DJ Rekha presents Grace and Bhangra Part 2, I believe? Oh, you know how it is. <laughs> well, since then, I've, I've done a bunch of things. The album, granted, it's been a while. Um, since then, I've done a couple of remixes. Uh, I did a single. I launched a, a label, which I need to relaunch, because we launched it, and then I got very involved in teaching. So that the last track was uh, PR Baile. Um, I'm basically mostly working, uh, I do a weekly uh, radio show online, so that's really where I'm consistently working on uh, music, and the show is in two parts, one Bangra and, beyond. Bangra and Beyond, one part is a Bangra set, 40 minutes, and the second part is whatever the hell I'm thinking about musically. DJ Rekha, Bangra, Bollywood, whatever you want to call her, she's been in the White House, represented us, she's gone to India as an ambassador for our community, she's doing her job pioneer, ambassador, whatever you call it. She's an artist, she's a human being, she's Daisy, she's proud. This is DJ Rekha, New York City. Thanks a Thank lot. Thank you so much, Rekha.